boys and girls, I hope you all had a wonderful week. Today, we're going to be learning about how God is the creator, and we're going to be learning from the book of Job, which is in the Old Testament. So today, you're going to notice that I'm doing a lot of reading from my computer screen, which you can't see, and from my Bible. So I've got my Bible opened up to chapter 38. That's where our verses are going to start from. <clears throat> There's a man in the Bible named Job, and he was going through some really difficult times. And he wanted to ask God some questions about why things were being so hard for him. Well, God didn't really explain why Job was going through some hard times, but it but he did show how awesome and amazing God is as a creator. Let's see what God showed Job about all the things he made and why we can trust him. Well, I'm going to read some verses for you. And after I finish reading each set of verses, you'll have five seconds to strike a pose that represents what I read about. And be creative. Okay, the first verse I'm going to read to you is about oceans. Chapter 38, verses 8 through 11. Who enclosed the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, the dense clouds its wrap. When I imposed my limit for it, put a bar, put put on a bar and doors, and said, You may have come this far, no further. Here, your proud waves stop. Okay, are you ready to strike a pose? Oceans are huge. If you took the tallest mountain, Mount Everest, and you flipped it upside down and put it in the ocean, it would still be far, far away from the bottom. Not only are oceans huge, but we've only just begun to understand them. Scientists think that there are thousands of species in the ocean that we don't even know about. And we've only explored the ocean five to 10%. Okay, the next verse I'm going to read to you about is daylight, chapter 38, 12 through 15. In your lifetime, have you commanded the morning and formed the dawn of its place so it could take hold of earth by its edges and shake the wicked out of it? Do you turn it over like clay for a seal so it stands out like a colorful garment? Light is withheld from the wicked, the uplifted arm broken. Fun fact. Oops, strike a pose. Fun fact. It takes eight minutes and 20 seconds for the light from the sun to reach our earth. This is a lot of neat stuff we're learning about today. Okay, the next verse is about the stars. Job 38, 31 through 33. Can you bind Pleiades chains or loosen the reins of Orion? Can you guide the stars at their proper times and lead the bear with her cups? Do you know heaven's laws or can you impose its rule on earth? Okay, remember this is about stars. Fun fact, scientists estimate that there are one septillion stars. That's a one with 24 zeros behind it in the universe. And some scientists think that that's probably a low guess. Wow, that is something really spectacular. Okay, the next verse is about rain and lightning. Job 38, 34 through 38. Can you issue an order to the clouds so that their abundant waters cover you? Can you send lightning so it goes and then says to you, I'm here? Who put the wisdom in remote places or who gave it understand, who gave understanding to a rooster? Who is wise enough to count the clouds and who can tilt the heavens waters containers? so that dust becomes mud and clots of dirt adhere. Okay, 
hey, remember, this is about rain and lightning. Okay, fun fact, lightning is big and powerful. Most lightning strikes are two to three miles long and have one million volts of power. That's a lot. Wow. Okay, we've got two more Bible verses to read. This next one's about horses. And I know there are a lot of kids who love horses. Okay, I'm going switched over to chapter 39 in the book of Job. This time it's 19 through 21. Did you give the strength to the horse, clothe its neck with a mane, cause him to leap up like a locust, his majestic snorting of fright? He pawns in the valley and princes proudly charges at the battle weapons. Okay, strike a pose. Okay, fun fact. Horses run fast, around 27 miles per hour. That is super fast. But did you know another surprising fact is that the fastest horse ever ran 55 miles per hour. And this is kind of neat. Horses can't vomit. I don't know why they wanted me to tell you that, but they did. So that's a new fact. That's something I learned today. <laughs> okay. Here's our last reading from the book of Job, and it's about eagles and hawks. It comes from verse, uh, verses 26 through 28, uh, chapter 39. Sorry, having to get to it. There we go. Is it due to your understanding that hawks fly spreading its wings to the south or your, or at your command does the eagle soar at the vultures build a nest on high? They dwell on an upcrumbing of rock, their fortress on rock's edge. From there, they search for food. Their eyes notice it from afar. Okay, here we go. This is the fun fact. Eagle's wings are huge and heavy. So it takes a lot of energy to flap their wings. Instead, what they do is they catch air currents and they soar and they glide upon them. I'm sure you can think about some time that you might've looked up and you saw a bird gliding or maybe you even saw a hawk or maybe you even saw an eagle. But this is super interesting too. One eagle was observed to flap her wings for only two minutes and a total of a whole hour's worth of flying. So for two minutes, she flapped her wings during a whole hour's worth of flying. That's super amazing. God created some really amazing things, some very impressive, powerful things. Well, what does that show you about God? What's something that God made that impresses you? I always think about the Grand Canyon different rocks, the colors, the river at the bottom, the vegetation that grows in it, the different animals that you see in it. It's really a spectacular thing. If you haven't uh, been to the Grand Canyon, maybe you could take some time and look it up over the weekend or get your parents to tell you if they've been or maybe you could go to the library and check out a book. It's, it's really majestic. Um, if you could create something, what would it be? I don't know. I'll have to think about that for me. Maybe I'll tell you next week what I would create. God is the creator. He made you and me, and he wants to partner with us to take care of his creations. What's the one thing you can do to take care of God's creations? God is the creator, unmatched by anyone else. He can make things out of craft supplies or other things God made. But we can't make something out of nothing. What we can do is honor God's creations by taking good care of it. Well, boys and girls, I hope you can take some time this week to think of something that you may want to create and how we can take care of everything God created for us. I hope you all have a wonderful week. You stay healthy and safe.
and I'll see you back here next Sunday. I'm going to take a minute now and close this in prayer. Dear God, thank you for all that you created. The stars, the rain, the oceans, the mountain, the flowers, the animals, everything that we read about today. Thank you for these creations. Help us to know how to take care of them. Teach us how to love these creations like you do. Bless all the boys and girls at Grace. Let them have wonderful weeks. Keep them healthy, keep them safe, and keep them well until we return again next week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you had a great time today with me. You had a lot of fun striking some poses, even though I couldn't see them. And I just hope you all stay healthy and safe. And I can't wait to see you back again next week. Bye.